Okay, guys, I think we're ready. Uh, let's get started. My name is Chris Chillingworth. Welcome to this webinar. Uh, you're either watching this live or you might be watching this as a recording on YouTube or via my website or Vimeo or wherever. Um, but uh, this is a presentation that I've put together for everybody, really, uh, regarding spread betting for consistent profits. I've been sp spread betting now for seven years. First two years that I started off, I wasn't making any money. I was losing money. Uh, the last five years have been consistent, consistently profitable and uh, can't get my words out. And I just want to talk to you about what I'm doing to achieve that because it's generally speaking, in my experience, not what most people think. Um, I've coached over a thousand people now and a lot of people think it's the system or the moving averages that people are using or whether they're trading daily charts or 10 minute charts. And those are the wrong questions. Those aren't the things that are really going to make the difference because you can make money using all of those different things. Uh, where people are coming unstuck is areas of trading that people generally just don't even look at. And I think I've cottoned on to this and this is why I've been consistently profitable for the last five years. I want to talk to you about what some of those things are and maybe you'll get I'm hoping you'll get a ton of value out of this presentation, basically, and you'll walk away with some ideas that you can employ uh, and execute in your own trading and start to see a difference with your own profits. So uh, with that, let's get started. Okay, so my name is Chris Chillingworth. Uh, that is my ugly mug there in that screen. Um, I've been trading the financial markets now for seven years and profitably for the last five years. My first two years, I lost money. And I just want to kind of walk you through what I've been doing, really, um, so you can kind of understand my journey over the last seven years. I think a lot of people probably tuning into this will probably be able to relate to a lot of it. Um, so in 2010s, when I started, I actually was really keen on trading for a lot longer before that. Uh, a friend of mine worked for a well-known spread betting broker and sent me a book about spread betting and said, you probably will like this. And uh, since then, I've been kind of studying financial markets and the stock market. Uh, and one thing that put me off trading for quite a while was thinking that I needed to predict the markets, that I needed to know about what was going on behind the scenes at all these different companies. Uh, and I just, well, I just didn't think I was capable of doing that. And that put me off for quite a while. And it wasn't until I came across trend trade and trend following where I learned a system where you don't need to make predictions. You don't need to know about what, what's going on behind the scenes at companies. You don't even need to know what these companies do. <laughs> to me, they're just an epic code. They are just, you know, Apple is APPL, whatever it is, AAPL. Um, but they're just epic codes to me, really. And I don't need to know what the company does behind the scenes. I can make money out of them regardless. And when I learned this, it opened the doors for me to get into trading, get past my fears and really kind of get my teeth into it, really. So I began trading from home initially, um, pretty much just sitting on my bed in my bedroom, uh, my family home with a laptop, trying to work out how all this sort of stuff works. Um, uh, my son was born and I was sick of my job and I decided I wanted to spend more time around my kid. Uh, and I had no experience, no experience whatsoever, no financial um, trading background. I was, uh, I've been working in fraud investigation for most of my adult career, uh, investigating people for fraud for a number of different organizations and companies. And I was actually at the point where I was teaching, I was coaching fraud investigators. So I, I was teaching what I know, what I knew, and I was handing it down to other people, teaching them lie detection techniques and stuff like that, which sounds glamorous and exciting, but it really wasn't. Um, upsetting people for a living, because no one enjoys being investigated for fraud, was not particularly pleasant. And um, I was coming home from work every day, just feeling unfulfilled, really. So I decided I wanted to change, and I wanted to work from home. Um, I was also a part-time football coach. I've been working for the FA for quite a number of years. And I worked for Reading Football Club amongst many other organisations and football clubs. Um, and that's something that I've been doing since I was 16 years old. I was never a great player, um, but I had a mind for coaching. 
and teaching the sport to people. And I've been working with people from the age of six to at f- full adults, basically. So, um, yeah, uh, that's basically it was my background. And then my first trade, I basically put £500 into a spread betting account. I had no system whatsoever. I didn't know what I was doing. And I basically just put most of my money on a trade on silver. I went long on silver. Uh, very lucky because it was just when gold and silver were kind of exploding and I made 600 pounds. So I put 500 quid on the table and turned that into 1,100 quid, uh, making a 600 pound profit. So as you can imagine, at this point, I'm hooked. Um, I'm pretty happy with uh, with that return. It was the easiest 600 quid I've ever made by just literally clicking a button. And straight away, I just I was like, right, I need to really get into this because this is potential for some big money. Uh, got very excited, started planning what colour my yacht was going to be, <laughs> you know, uh, how I was going to spend my millions. Got totally carried away, of course, like probably most of us do. Uh, spent the rest of 2010 losing all that money and then some. So, uh, and, and that was just trying to work out how it all worked. You know, I didn't have a system. I didn't have any risk management. I was learning the mechanics of trading. Uh, I was taking too much risk on certain trades and then getting bitten, you know, and I was just basically losing money along the way. Uh, in 2011, I started to really kind of get my teeth into the concept of trend trading, trend following. Um, and I read and studied a ton of books. I mean, I read every day for a year and I genuinely mean that. Uh, every day I had a book in my hand to do with trading. And I decided, that, I mean, there were so many different styles of trading out there. You know, trend trading, there was... Uh, prediction based trading there's breakout systems there's you know all these different indicators you can use you can study ch- uh, candlestick patterns loads and loads of different ways to trade and i read about quite a few of them and for some reason i was just drawn to trend following it made more sense to me it made it seemed more logical uh, the concept of instead of trying to predict the markets just reacting to what they do and i i mean i'm not a surfer but the analogy seems quite um, apt of imagining a surfer in the water with his surfboard and he's waiting for a wave to come, you know, and he sees a swell in the in the ocean and he jumps on his board and sometimes they fizzle out and turn to nothing and he's wasted his energy and his time and he gets nothing out of it. In fact, he's, you know, he's lost something. Uh, and there are times when, you know, that big wave is huge and he'll ride it all the way to the end, all the way to the coastline. You know, and that's kind of what I'm doing with trend following is I'm at the whim of the market. If the market doesn't produce anything, I don't make anything. Uh, But I play every signal. I go for every wave. And sometimes, more often than not, they fizzle out into nothing. And every now and again, I catch a big, big trend, big, big wave. And that's how I make most of my money. Um, And that's that kind of just appealed to me, really appealed to me because I didn't have to try and predict anything. I'm reacting to what the markets are doing and there's no guesswork. There's no using your hunch or your gut feel. There's no trying to research into companies. You don't need to do any of that. You just wait for a signal to appear on the chart and trade it. And I liked that. Um, But 2011, I was still making a ton of mistakes. Um, Still damaged by all the psychological biases. I was getting in my own way and I generally lost money in 2011. Uh, I started a blog that year. Um, I've been blogging most of my life. I've blogged about coaching. I've blogged about, uh, I used to run a unsigned bands fanzine uh, blog that became very popular to the point where I couldn't run it anymore because it was so busy. Uh, so I was no stranger to blogging and I've blogged about hiking. I've blogged about anything that I've had an interest in. So it became natural to obviously start a blog about my trading. And I was, I had no you know, it was warts and all, basically. I had nothing to hide. I had no nothing to prove. I was losing money. So I was just placing my trades online for all to see. It was 100% transparent. And yeah, for the first year, obviously, I was losing money, but people were quite interested in what I was doing. So the ball became um, quite popular. And it was 2012 when things started to kind of work out for me. I phased out a lot of my big errors that I had been making. And I finished the year up 6.8%. Now, I should have made way more money than that. I mean, I should have made probably 40, 50% in 2012. Um, going back over, you know, the trades that I made, the problem was 
that I killed winning trades too early. I let losing trades run for too long. And, you know, all the common issues that I'm going to go through later in this presentation. But, yeah, where I should have made about 40-50%, I made 6.8%. So, a bit of a bummer, but it was uh, still part of my learning process, really. And it was my first winning year, so I was pretty happy with that. Uh, and it was during a time when, and it still is a time, really, at time of recording, but a time when you could only really make sort of 0.8, uh, 0.5% return on your savings in the bank account. So I felt pretty chuffed that I made 6.8% on my money at least. Um, but yeah, my first winning year basically. And then 2013 uh, was my light bulb moment. And I call it that because it's when things really started to click for me. I began to properly understand the strategy that I was trading. Uh, things started to make a lot more sense. And it was actually a visual chart that I saw um, called an R chart which really brought it home for me. And it, I think it was the visual aspect of it that really uh, just made things click in my brain. And it's you know different things for different people. But when you find it, it becomes very exciting because then you understand, rah, right, okay, that's what I've got to do. This is why this system works. And right now I'm sabotaging it by all the silly things that I'm doing. And it just kind of came together for me. And I became pretty much within, I'd say, a couple of weeks of the start of 2013, I became far more disciplined because I understood why I wasn't doing as well as I wanted to do because I'd actually been sabotaging everything myself. It wasn't the system that was at fault. It was me getting in the way of that system. For example, I was killing losing trades far too quickly because I was so scared of losing the profit. I was letting losing trades run because I didn't want to close them and, and, and accept the loss. So keeping it open gave me hope that it could turn around only for it to carry on going, getting worse and worse, you know, and instead of closing a losing trade at minus 100 quid like I should have done, I would let it run to like minus 800 quid before finally closing the trade, which just, you know, it's just the maths aren't going to work out. And so I was starting to like understand this sort of stuff and I was kind of um, a lot more disciplined with my trading and I made a 34.8% return, which I was over the moon about. Uh, and it was at this point during this year that the blog obviously then exploded because People all wanted to know what I was doing differently, how it was working. And I would get a ton of emails from people asking me things like, you know, what what if I use this moving average? Where are you placing your stop losses? How do you decide that? How do you know when to get in and when to get out? And so imagine me coming, you know, I was still working full time at this, this point. I was doing this trading. This is daily charts. So I'm, I'm coming home. I'm doing a... Uh, I say nine to five, I was working seven till seven <laughs> and I'd come home and I'd put the kids to bed and I'd make dinner and I'd sit down and spend 15, 20 minutes checking my positions, my trades, updating my blog and then tending to probably 20 emails a day from people all asking me about what I'm up to. And it became so busy to do those emails, I decided maybe I should put something together for people that they can just learn off and instead of having to ask me all these piecemeal these these bits of questions about my system and only getting answers to those particular questions not getting the full picture that they needed what if I put an online video together that taught them what I was doing which is what I did um, and that turned into a course eventually basically I put a course together and it's been tweaked a few times over the years but I, I mentioned eventually put a course together um, in 2014 I was sitting on 67% on the 1st of December 2014. So I'm sitting there thinking, and I'm still working full time. I remember sitting at work, checking my positions uh, just before the 1st of December. And I'm sitting there on plus 60% thinking, you know, I've nailed this. <laughs> I'm thinking, wow, I've made a 67% return. This is awesome. Um, and what a year. But then in December 2014, the positions that I had in my portfolio, I was long biased mostly, um, and the markets took a turn for the worse, and I ended up losing a big chunk of those profits in literally the last 30 days, and it fell to 35.1% by the 31st of December, which is when I uh, closed out, because um, I had a had a policy of closing out on the last day of the year and starting fresh on the first day of the year, uh, something that Jesse Livermore used to do, and I quite like the idea of it. Um, not so bothered about that anymore, but uh, yeah, I was sitting on uh, 
67%, fell to 35.1% by the end of 2014. Still a decent return, 35.1%, but a bit of pill to swallow when you're up much higher than that previously. But, you know, you've got to kind of cast your mind back to the beginning of the year and ask yourself, would you have taken 35%? Of course you would. So a decent result that I was happy with. And then 2015, I finished up with a 47% return. So, you know, good results. These are good, good returns for the year um, that I'm certainly happy with. 2015 was a pivotal year for me because I quit my 9 to 5 uh, or my 7 to 7 at the end of 2015. And I went decided I was going to go and trade full time and to coach other people. Basically, I'd made an, I was making enough money off uh, two of my businesses that I was running part time anyway. Uh, two little, I had a card business and a jewellery business that I was running. Um, and I was also getting into coaching other people and obviously charging for my time because my time is money. So why not? And so I was making a little bit of income from the coaching and helping other people get to where I was. And I wanted to trade full time. I wanted to make money from my actual trading as well. So with those different income streams, I had enough between them to be able to quit my job, my, my normal rat race job and go and start up on my own, uh, which is what I did. Took a bit of a leap, but uh, it worked out in the end. Uh, in 2016, therefore, I decided to run two trading systems for the first time. I had my end of day system that I've been running since 2010 uh, and I decided I wanted to start intraday trading as well. Uh, I, my original system, my daily system, achieved an 18.2% return, so, you know, h half decent. Uh, my intraday system in 2016 achieved a 135% return, uh, and I turned 9,557 quid, which is what I started with for that system, turned that into £22,504, so doubled my money and then some. Uh, very, very popular system, uh, worked really, really well, obviously. And basically all I did was I took my um, end of day trend following philosophy, um, built a system around that for 10 minute charts and traded it. Uh, and it worked really, really well. The downside to that system was that I pretty much had to give up my life. Um, the markets would open at eight o'clock in the morning and, well, I mean, basically I was tra tra uh, trading the German DAX index and these indexes are now open 24 hours a day. So things would kick off around 8 o'clock in the morning uh, and I'd be trading that until probably 7 p.m. when things started to die down. But even then, sometime in the evenings, there would be some activity and it became quite draining for me. Um, I've got three kids uh, I like to have a social life. Uh, I found myself going out for dinner with my friends and constantly being stuck behind my screen because I wanted to keep an eye on my trade. Uh, you know, I was picking up the kids from school and constantly being stuck behind my phone, feeling very panicky because I've got a live position running. And I didn't really, after I traded that for a full year, pretty much, there was a couple of gaps where I took some days off here and there, but pretty much traded that for a full year. And despite the fact it made great return, really good money, uh, I value my quality of life a lot over money. Um, I don't really, I'm one of these people that I don't really feel like I need to be rich. I'm quite happy if all my bills are paid for, I've got some play money left over, I'm quite comfortable. And so a lot of people have said to me, how the hell could you stop trading that system when you're making that kind of return? What imbecile does this? Uh, my response to it is I value my lifestyle above money and, uh, you know, the system makes really good returns, but you've got to <laughs> dedicate your life to it, you know, and I've already had a job before where I was making 60k and I was miserable and I quit that job and went for a job that paid 12k for six months just to kind of relax for a bit and have no responsibility. So, uh, you know, I'm one of those weirdos, I guess, that doesn't love the money as much as I love the lifestyle. Um, but I still, I'm ambitious and I still want to make money. Um, this is why I trade. I love trading. It's just that system was a bit much for me. So I quit trading it in 2017. Uh, I had a rather unexpected tax bill in 2017 where I had to pay £12,500. Um, but HMRC turned around and said something along the lines of, we have to, I had to pay 
something like a year's tax in advance now. And it was a new rule they were rolling out and I wasn't expecting it. I had to pay 12, 12.5k up front, which you know I had nowhere else to take that but from my trading profits. Uh, so that's what I did. I started fresh with a 10k account in 2017. Uh, and I achieved a 13.4% return on my end of day trading system. I uh, wasn't trading intraday in 2017. I did a bit here and there, but nothing that I really stuck to. It was more testing of different intraday systems than actually trading them consistently. But my end of day trading, my daily charts, I traded throughout the year, finished up with a 13.4% return. Uh, also the same year that I started up my free Facebook group, which is still running strong today, called Trading the Trend, which uh, I would invite you to come and join us. Uh, it's a community of spread betters and trend traders um, who, you know, it's a, a, a good community. There's no one selling you anything in there. There's no uh, people trying to give you predictions or telling you that you should buy this or buy that. Um, it's very much in the spirit of trend following and also it's heavily policed by me. So if anyone acts like an idiot in there, they get kicked out pretty quickly. Um, I've also got a podcast called Trading the Trend, which is uh, on iTunes, but also on the website. But we'll talk about that a bit later on. And then finally this year, um, I'm still trading end of day. Uh, right now at time of recording, pretty much a break even for the year. We're not, not really flying yet, but uh, it is only March. Um, I took on 50 personal coaching clients this year. So that's something that I kind of doubled down on, doing a lot more one-to-one -one coaching with people, trying to help them out and get them up to speed. Um, I've created a new self-study course. That's something that I'm still current, kind of finishing at the moment. Uh, this is something that uh, will be like a, a school textbook that you can study um, on trading and trend following and my approach to trading. And then there's an exam at the end of it and you get a certificate and all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm building my own trading room at the moment, which is I'm physically taking apart a building and rebuilding it and putting a trading room in this place, basically. Um, so I'm quite excited about that. It's something I'm working on right now. And I'm doubling down this year on my YouTube channel and on my podcast whilst still trading my end of day approach. So two years of making mistakes and not making money and then five years of consistent profits. So first of all, what mistakes was I making? What was I getting wrong, first of all? Well, there are two main characters in Star Trek. If you've ever watched the original Star Trek, I'm not a Trekkie, I'm not big into it. But most people know these two characters. You've got McCoy and you've got Spock. Okay, two big characters in Star, in Star Trek. Nearly says Star Wars then. Apologies to the Trekkies. Um, McCoy is an emotional person. Okay, so he's very on the edge of his seat, very uh, dramatic. You know, we're all going to die. It's the end of the world, sort of flailing his arms about, getting upset. Uh, Spock is the polar opposite. Spock is more logical thinking, uh, very unemotional. If you trade like McCoy, you're going to lose money. If you trade like Spock, you're putting yourself in a very good position to make money. And I learned this in the third year of trading, that your psychology and emotion has a huge impact on your trading. Okay, we will look at systems, but systems only make up about 20% of your success. If you're going to, if you're a successful trader, you can only apply 20% of that success to your trading system, really, because you can take the world's best trading system and still not make money because you're getting in the way. And this is the problem most traders have is they get in their own way of success. And here's why. And this is why I wasn't making in my first, making any money in my first two years This is why I lost money. First of all, I held on to losing trades for far too long. So if I had a trade that was losing, I was down 500 pounds. I didn't want to close that trade because if I did, I'd lose that 500 pounds. All the time it was kept open, there was potential for that trade to go back up. And I got, I kind of clung on to that like many traders do, clung on to that hope that this could turn around yet. And so I held on to that open trade, that losing trade, only for it to then go down to minus 750. The problem is now it's at minus 750, it's even harder to close that trade because now it's an even bigger loss if you do. And so you then hope, well, maybe I can make some of my money back if I keep it open. Only it goes down to minus a thousand pounds and minus two thousand pounds. 
and it just gets harder and harder to close that trade. When you're down minus £2,000, it's unrealized. It's still live and it could turn around and it could, you know, it's the, the reality of it, it could turn around. But if you close that trade, you've lost your £2,000. And so you get yourself into this trap of this downward spiral and sometimes they do go back up, you know, but there are times when they don't and you only need one trade to just not go back up and to get out of hand to lose a big chunk of your account. And that happened to me several times in the first two years where I let losing trades run on and get too out of hand. Um, I cut my winning trades too early, so I was doing the flip of that as well. So when I did get a winning trade, I'd be so petrified that I was going to lose that money that I would bank that money. And so what I ended up having was small winning trades and big losing trades. And obviously, it doesn't take a genius to work out that the maths on that are not going to add up. You're not going to make money if all your winning trades are tiny and your losing trades are too big. Uh, I failed to pull the trigger. So when I've got a trade that I've got a signal that's saying it's time to trade this trade, it's trying to ex it's time to execute. Uh, I would not pull the trigger. I would not execute that trade for fear that it was going to be another losing trade. So my brain would start telling me, ah, your system doesn't work or this is going to be another loser. Maybe you should wait a month and trade next month. You know, and all these different things would come into my head and I would convince myself for reasons that I would search for uh, not to take that trade. I would tell myself, do not take this trade. Even though I had a, a signal on it and I should have taken it as per my system, I would talk myself out of doing so. Only to then find that many of those trades that I didn't take on went on to make loads of money. You can imagine how frustrating that is. And uh, I did that several times in the first couple of years of trading. Um, system jumping. This is really common. And, you know, I've worked with over a thousand people now. So I've seen this not just in my own trading, but in everybody else's as well. Uh, system jumping is basically the grass is greener fallacy. It's this concept that... Uh, you're trading system A, let's say, and you're doing all right, but then he goes on a bit of a losing run and you start to tell yourself the system don't work anymore. So then you start testing other systems and you find another system that would have made money in that period. So you jump, you jump over to system B and you start trading that, which does all right for a few weeks, let's say, only to then go on another losing run on system B. And you start looking at different systems again and you find system C. So you start trading system C, which would have made money in that period, but then goes on a little bit of a losing run. Uh, and then you look back at system A and find actually system A would have been profitable. Let's go back to system A. And what you end up doing is one, not settling on any one system, but two, you're only trading the losing periods. Every system you go to, you trade and, and you experience the losing run. And then just when it's about to pay out and start making some profit, you've moved to something else to go and experience a losing run on a different system. And what you're doing is you're always behind. You're always behind that system. And the way out of that is obviously to stick to one system and experience the good and the bad with that system. But most people have already jumped ship during its, during its poor phase and, uh, and are just experiencing poor phase after poor phase. And this is why they can't find a system that works because they don't stick to any of them. Um, so I was doing that definitely in my first two years. I did that way too often. Uh, I traded when I shouldn't. So this is the fear of missing out, fear of worrying that uh, when there's no signals appearing, you're not making any money. And instead of sitting on my hands and waiting for the right signals to come, I would open trades that I should never have been in. And often when I did that, I found that I had no exit strategy, I had no system or strategy for that particular trade, and I'd end up just predicting or closing them prematurely or uh, end up costing me way more money than had I just waited for a signal to appear. So I ended up where I'm trying to force a trade by trading something that I shouldn't be, I ended up losing more money than I actually made. And that happened a lot in my first three years, I think. Um, I paid for hot tips. I watched the media. I watched Bloomberg. I was reading Market Watch. I was reading all these different websites, trying to get insight into the next big stock that was going to explode. You know, and there are plenty of opinions on that sort of stuff. Uh, and I followed the herd. And the problem people don't realise is that 
if everyone's finding out about these apparent stocks that people believe are going to explode, then everyone's trading them. And if everyone's losing money out there, then generally following the herd's not going to serve you well. If they say like 90% of people are losing money on the stock market, why are we following the herd? The herd are losing money. So um, I learned this the hard way uh, through two or three years of following hot tips and following gurus that were telling me the next big, big stocks to trade. And I kept doing it. I kept buying the ones they told me to buy and they just didn't work out. And I realized that I could do just as well. So I stopped following them and I started following my own system instead. Uh, I had this mindset of just tell me what stocks to buy. I didn't want to do the hard work. I didn't want to have to read the books and study the courses and do the training and work things out the hard way. I wanted someone to just say, can you just tell me what stocks I need to buy? Uh, that doesn't work. Uh, you've got to, you've got to, you know, if you want to go down the gym uh, and uh, sorry, if you want to lose weight, you've got to go down the gym. Uh, you've got to put the work in. You've got to do the science. No one's going to do it for you. Uh, and it was kind of the magic pill approach, really, you know, where you turn around and you say, I don't want to actually lift the weights. Can you just give me a pill that's going to help me lose weight? Well, it doesn't work. Uh, you have to go in and do the work. And it's the same with trading. If you've got a mindset of, can you just like, can you just tell me what to buy? Uh, can you just give me uh, a, a, an email every week telling me the stocks I need to trade? You ain't going to make money that way. So the last five years, the slide says last four years, that's an error. Uh, in the last five years, I've been trading a lot more like Spock. And this is what's really made the difference for me in my trade. And this is, I'm certain this is why I have turned things around. Because my system is exactly the same. My system is the same system, the same approach. Okay. So it's the way I'm trading now that's making the big difference with the profits. So... And I can tell, the, tell you this because I can look back at my data on the trading in my first two years and I can see that had I stuck to the system, I, I can back test it, I can see that I would have made money, but I was closing trades too early. I was letting trades run too long, like losing trades run too long. You know, I was doing all the things that we just talked about in the previous slide and I was being emotional. I was being the McCoy character and Stock, Spock would make an excellent trader. Because, you know, he would be able to keep emotion out of his trading. Uh, and this is what I was starting to do. I started to kill losing trades quickly. So how do you stop yourself from getting in that situation where a trade is too big? The loss is too big to close. You just don't allow yourself to ever get there. You kill your losing trades quick. So let's say you've got a maximum risk of 100 quid. Well, you set up your system to make sure that if a trade starts going against you and you're down 100 quid, it cuts you out and it cuts you out automatically. So you get out of that trade as soon as it reaches a certain financial loss. This way you control your losses and you never have one loss to ever get out of hand and cost you loads of money. The only way you can therefore lose big in this start of trading is death by a thousand cuts. You'd have to go on a massive losing run for them all to add up to then, you know, add up to a, a decent amount of a loss. But that, I mean, that has never happened to me yet that I've gone on such a losing run that it's cost me that much. I've gone on losing runs, but they've never cost me that much because I keep my losses small. On the flip side, I now allow my winning trades to run. So when I have a winning trade, I let it reach its full potential. I don't bottle it and close it because I'm fearful of something that hasn't even happened, that I'm going to lose, I'm going to give the profits back. I let them run. Sometimes I do give the profits back, but sometimes I don't. And you'll see as we go through this, you're going to see some big winning trades that I've been on that had I taken the profits too early, you know, my results would have been completely different that year. Um, I always pull the trigger. So whenever I've got a signal, I never talk myself out of it anymore. I'm disciplined. I will just take the trade because I don't know what's going to happen on that trade. And it doesn't matter which trade it is. It could That could be the next big ride, the next big trend. And so trying to talk myself into the fact like, well, this might not be the, a winner. This might be a losing trade. Kind of pointless, really. It's a waste of energy. And I've taught my, trained myself how to get out of that. And that's something, all these things are stuff that I train other people in now. I teach people how to kill their losing trades quickly. I teach people how to allow winning trades to run. I teach them how to pull the trigger. I also teach them how to stick to the system, you know, which is something else that I do now. No more system jumping. 
you know, I will commit to my system for a minimum period of time. I mean, I'm committed to my system now. I've been running it for years. Uh, but something that I teach people is when they start taking on any of my systems or, or uh, working with me from a coaching capacity, one of the big things we do is we say, right, how long are you going to commit to the system for? And you've got to stick to that system for a certain period of time uh, because you need to see that the system works to give you the confidence in the system, if that makes sense. You can't be confident in the system when you've never actually experienced the, the, the highs. And if you've only experienced the lows, then of course you're going to want to, you know, jump jump ship all the time. Uh, I know when to sit on my hands now, so I'm not taking trades I shouldn't be taking. Uh, I'm not sitting there trying to force a trade. If there are no signals and nothing nothing's going on, I'll just sit on my hands and wait. Because most of the time I've kind of forced a trade, it's cost me money. So I'm actually making money by doing nothing. Uh, I never look outside my system. I'm not trying to, you know... Um, take on trades that shouldn't shouldn't be in my system whatsoever and I know now that there's no such thing as a magic pill I'm not interested in what other experts have to say I don't listen to other people's opinions on which is the next big stock to trade I'm not interested in any of that I will just trade what I do so when it's all boiled down when I look at all the mistakes that I was making and the things that I've changed to have a direct impact on my results it's all back down to psychology. The reason why I was losing money was because of my psychology, not the trading system. And everybody thinks it's the trading system. Everyone's shopping around trying to find the best trading system. You know, it's always the grass is greener fallacy. But what I've realized is it's not the trading system. It's you. You're getting in your own way of success. And so when people work with me, that's one of the first things we do is we take a very simple trading system, we commit to it, and we work on them as a trader. And the results are far better doing it that way because you can have the best system in the world, but if you are going to get in your way all the time by killing winning trades too early and letting losing trades run and taking systems uh, signals you shouldn't and not taking s signals you should, it doesn't matter how good your system is, you're going to mess it up. You know, or if you're overtrading and you're taking too much risk on certain trades, you're going to mess it up. It doesn't matter how good it is. So that's what we work on. Uh, I also realized that, you know, we don't have, or I certainly don't have a 50-50 odds of picking a winning trade each time. A lot of people that come in and start working with me, they believe they've got 50-50, i.e. we can go long or we can go short. We can buy or we can sell. It's 50-50 surely, but it's not. And you've got to understand this because you need to understand that you can be right for five minutes, but still end up being wrong. Yeah, if you go long on a stock, you might be right for five minutes, and then five minutes later, you're suddenly wrong. The odds are way less than 50-50 that when you go long, it's going to stay long over the next period, you know, that it's going to finish at a higher price. So the odds are much worse than 50-50 and you getting it right. So if you're more likely to be wrong than right, then if, if I'm more likely to be wrong, which is the case, then I can assume I'm probably going to have more losing trades than winning trades. In terms of frequency, in terms of the number of trades that I have, more of them are going to be losing trades, less of them will be winning trades. Okay, and that's based on just the probability, the odds. So if I accept this is the case, then there's only one way to realistically be profitable on the financial markets. And that is the number one rule of trend following, cut your losses and let your winners run. And this is my turning point. This was the big, big lesson that I learned that suddenly brought it all home for me. So over the last five years, <laughs> I've had a win rate of between 28 and 42%. So this is by through my own data. So over the last five years of my data, I've had a win rate of between 28 and 42%. And it says four years there. It's an old slide, but uh, it's still the same. I, I'm seeing this consistently. So in other words, for every 10 trades that I'm making, I get three or four winners, six or seven losers. So 10 trades, let's say seven losses, three winners. So people see that and they, they say to me, well, how can you possibly be making any money then if you're losing more times than you win? Well, this is how. If we look at 10 trades, 7 losing trades, let's say we com we control these losing trades so we only lose £50 on each losing trade, 
uh, we make a £350 loss. Seven losing trades, £50 each, £350 quid lost. But the three winners we have out of these 10 trades, let's say they make us £200 each because we've let them run. Uh, that's a combined total profit of £600, which once reduced out of the losses, we've got a profit of 250 quid left over. So 10 trades, seven losses at 50 quid, 350 loss. Three winners at 200 pounds, 600 win. That leaves us a profit of 250 pounds. That is, in a very small nutshell, basically what I'm doing to make money. And what it means is you don't have to have more winning trades and losing trades in order to profit. In fact, you can have a 20% win rate and still do okay. The reason why most traders are losing out there, in my opinion, based on my own experience, the reason, you know, the losing for two years, uh, turning it around for myself, and working with over a thousand people now, are all mostly beginners, uh, some experienced traders as well who just never managed to make it work until they started working through this. The reason why most traders are losing is because they cut their winners too early, they let their losses, their losers run. Uh, they end up losing more than they win. Their psychology beats them. So they're having more losing trades than winning trades. Okay, probability suggests that's going to be the case. Not always. Some people out there are over 50% right, but most of us are wrong. Most of us are wrong more than we're right. So what they're doing is on top of that, so the odds are against them straight away, right? The odds are against you being profitable. So when you let your losses run and get too big, well, you've got more losing trades in terms of frequency than you have winning trades. But now you're, you're um, exacerbating the issue, you're sabotaging your system because your losing trades are getting too big and you've got more of them and you're few winning trades, you're killing too early because you're banking the profit and the fear of giving the money back. And I don't know if you've ever been in a position where you've had a winning trade and it's doing really well until suddenly it starts to plummet back down again. And people say to me, yeah, I can, I, I'll let winners run. I very rarely meet people that, without any training, can suddenly just let their winners run. Because when that price is falling down and they're watching their £1,000 profit turn into an £800 profit, turn into a £600 profit, turn into a £400 profit, down to a £200 profit, anyone who doesn't get squeaky bum time during that period, um, you know, that's the kind of trader you need to be. You need to be someone who can sit there and watch that happen and allow that to happen. And that's a tough, tough thing to do. And I know that because I've had to teach myself how to do it and I teach other people how to do it. And it's tough. It's hard work learning how to do that. The only way you learn how to do that is by really analysing your system and understanding why you have to do that. And when you start to realise and when you start to learn that if you don't do that, you will never experience the big winning trades you need and that you're always going to end up sabotaging your results. That's usually the motivation you need to be able to then allow yourself to do these things and to let these winning trades fall down to nothingness. Because sometimes that will happen, but sometimes they'll drop for a little bit and go straight back up and make you way more in profit. And... That's what you've got to experience. And once people have found that one trade that does that and they sit there and they wait and they watch it fall, but then it bounces back up and they go, it goes on to make them a ton of money, that's usually the turning point for many people. They, they email me and they'll say, ah, it's happened. I've banked that now. I've banked a much bigger profit than I would have done. Uh, I've now got a profitable year. Thanks so much, um, you know, and it's confirmation for them that the system works. But until you've experienced that, it's very difficult to watch these winning trades fall. And, you know, what people will do is they'll be up a thousand quid. It'll fall to 800 quid. It'll fall to 600 profit, 400 profit, 200 profit. Then they'll think, well, I've got to get something out of this trade. So they'll bank it at 200. Well, now they've just banked a small winning trade. And they'll say to themselves, well, at least I've got something out of it. It's not good enough. Because that's not going to pay off your losing trades. You need that trade to be a free £4,000 win. And so you're banking these tiny little winners thinking you're getting somewhere when you're not. And this is where people get unstuck. This is why trading is so difficult. You know, trading is tough. And it's not because you haven't found the perfect system. It's because you can't do this stuff. Because human emotions and human psychology is powerful stuff. 
So I want to teach you something very basic that I learned of a gentleman called Van K. Farp, who's got some books out. You can study this if you want. Um, but if R represents your maximum risk in this formula, then we would never allow a loss higher than 1R, but we would always allow a win higher than 1R. Okay, So we'd never allow a loss higher than 1R, but we would allow a win higher than 1R. Uh, 1R being one of your maximum risk. So if your maximum risk was £100, let's say, you would never allow a loss higher than 100 quid, but you would always allow a winner higher than 100 pounds. Hope that makes sense. Uh, and this was a big turning point for me. This was the visual chart I was telling you about before. So what this is here is on the left-hand side axis, we've got the frequency, the number of trades made. Okay, And then down the bottom, we've got the results. So what was the R return on these trades? So you see where the blue line is cutting through one of the bars. It's the fourth bar along. It's a 0.0. .0. That's basically the number of trades that closed at break even. So we just did, we didn't lose any money. We didn't make any money on those trades. The one on the left of that, the big tall bar, which is, it says 0 0.5, minus 0 0.5. That shows that we had 25 trades from this data set, and this is my own data from my own trades during a short period of time. Uh, 25 trades that came to uh, half my maximum risk. So 1R is my maximum risk. I lost 0.5R. So if I risked 100 pounds on a trade, 25 of those trades ended up as a loss of 50 quid. So I lost half of my maximum risk. Uh, about 12 of them, I lost my maximum risk. And there was a handful where I lost just over my maximum risk. And that was due to slippage and a little few few issues like that, taking a little bit too much risk on one of the trades, which was a little bit of a mistake. Uh, but nothing's cost me more than 1.5R. A majority of my losses come between 50% of my maximum risk and 100% of my maximum risk. Okay, and I'm not going to lose any more than that. On the flip side, if you look on the right-hand side of the blue line, you can see the amount of trades where I've made a 0.5R profit. So that's where, let's say I've risked 100 pounds. For every 100 pounds I've risked, I've made 50 pounds back. So I put 100 quid on the table, got my 100 quid back because I didn't actually lose it, and I've made 50 quid out of it. I've turned that into a 50% return, basically. Um, I've got six trades there where I've made a 100% return, a 1R. So I've put 100 quid on the table, I've got that back, and I've made 100 quid. And so on. You can see it, it rises. We've got a 2R. We've got 2.5R trades, we've got one free R trade, we've got a 6R trade, we've got a 7R trade. Um, and if the chart was long enough, uh, it would also show a 31R trade, an 18R trade, which we're going to look at in a moment. Um, but these are the big winning trades, you know. We got a 31R trade. That is, you know, for every 100 quid wrist, we made £3,100 back. Well, we would never have a 31R loss. We would never have a 4R loss. We would never even have a 2R loss. We would only ever lose our maximum risk. This is how we make money, where despite the fact we're going to lose more times than we win, this is how you profit in that situation. If your win rate is under 50%, you can still make money. Because you're, when you're wrong, you lose tiny amount, a tiny amount of money. When you're right, you win big. And that was actually a lesson from Warren Buffett, who doesn't trade like this. You know, he's an investor. But he once said, when you lose money, make sure you only lose a small amount. When you're wrong, only lose a small amount. When you're right, open up the door for potential to win big. And that's exactly what we do. So my biggest loss that I've ever had is a 2R loss. Okay, so that was two times my maximum risk. So for, let's say I wanted to risk £100, I ended up losing £200. Now, why does that happen? Well, there, on this one occasion, basically, I took a little bit too much risk. I, I actually took more risk than I should have done. Uh, broke my own rules slightly and also suffered from a bit of slippage. So it was a double slap in the face, really. Um, and slippage is where the broker doesn't quite get you out the price you wanted. You end up getting out at a slightly worse price. Ended up costing me... 2R, 200%. This only really happened once. Uh, most of my losing trades are 1R or less than that. My biggest win, however, is 31R. That's the biggest win I've had. Uh, that is 31 times my maximum risk or uh, you know, return of 3,100% on that one trade. So for every 100 quid tra uh, risked, I won 3,100 pounds back. So... 
that gives you an indication of the sort of big trends that we're looking for. And I just want to talk to you very quickly about risk tolerance because a lot of people come into trading and they'll risk 5 6% per trade. The problem with that is if you look at this chart here, if you're risking 10% risk per trade, let's say, okay, your maximum risk tolerance, let's say of your account, you're going to risk 10% of your account on every trade. Uh, you've only got 10 trades where you can lose that maximum risk before you've wiped out your entire account. So it doesn't really give you much flexibility, it doesn't give you much leeway. If you go on a 10 trade losing run, you're out of the game. If you go on a 5 trade losing run, you've lost 50% of your account. So you don't really want to be doing that. Uh, if you risk 5% risk per trade, you've still only got 20 trades where you're going to lose everything. And so what I say to people usually is try and stick between the 0.5 and 3% risk per trade. Now that's going to dramatically depend on your starting capital and how much you have. And uh, there's some formulas that I teach in my courses and stuff like that that can show you how much you need in your starting capital to be able to trade the system you're looking at effectively and properly uh, with the right risk management and the right risk tolerance. But let's say you're trading at 1%, for example, which is what I generally kind of trade around uh, on my systems. I'm trading at 1% risk per trade on my end of day daily chart system. Uh, I can have... 100 one R losses before I lose my account. So that just gives me so much more flexibility. It's so much less risky. I would have to go on a massive losing run to lose a big chunk of my account, uh, which doesn't happen really. Uh, I have been on some losing runs, but I've kept them at such a small level that it hasn't cost me too much and I've ended up profitable still. And we'll see some examples of that in a moment. So my trading philosophy, how do I approach trading just very quickly? What is my philosophy and approach to all this? Well, I've got no interest in trying to predict the markets. I don't predict, make any predictions. People come to me and they say, what do you think the pound's going to do this month? Uh, what stock's good? You know, what stock should I be looking at? I've no interest in that. I've got no predictions to give you. I just follow what price actually does. Uh, I can tell you what markets that I'm going to take a, a trade in. Uh, which is something that I do for my um, my members, send out a uh, newsletter telling them basically what I'm trading and why, uh, which they can choose to follow or just use for educational purposes half time. But um, I make no predictions on what markets I think are going to do well. And I ex readily accept I'm going to lose more times than I win anyway. So my predictions would be kind of worthless, really. Um, I want to make money in up and down markets. So when we're in a bear market, I want to be able to actually continue to make money. Uh, spread betting allows us to do that because we can go long and short on certain stocks. Um, I don't like fundamental analysis. I don't use it at all. I don't use technical analysis either. So I'm not studying chart patterns or candlestick patterns. I don't do anything like that. I'm not using Fibonacci arcs or RSI or MACD. I don't care about any of that sort of stuff. It makes no... I've tried using all that stuff. It's added no value to my trading results. So why bother? Um, fundamental analysis I don't use. If you're not familiar with that, uh, we're talking about crop reports. If you're trading commodities, uh, it might be stock levels of companies. It might be profit loss records, balance sheets, even down to analyzing who's running the company and what's their track record been like, all that kind of stuff. I don't care. And I've never needed that information to be profitable. Um, there's a lot of people around out there that say you have to be studying this stuff to make money. It's rubbish because I'm living proof that that's not the case. Um, and again, I've studied some fundamental analysis before. I've added it to my trading. It's not added any value to my results. So again, why waste my time doing it if it's not adding value? Um, I prefer systematic mechanical trading. So I basically trade signals. And it's systematic and mechanical, which basically means that... There's a system to it and I can backdate it so I can go back and look at the last 10 years of a stock and I can plot my entry and exit signals as per my system and I can say, would this have made money? And that's a nice thing to do because when you trade with your own discretion, when you trade in the moment with gut feel or hunches or I think I'm going to get into this trade now, you can't then backtest that effectively. You can't go through historical data and uh, record the decisions you would have made in the moment. Uh, whereas with a systematic mechanical approach, you can absolutely do that. And that gives you better positive expectancy for your system. Because if it's worked well in the past, it's given you, uh, you can expect 
to make some money from it in the future. Uh, it's not guarantee that it's going to be profitable going forward, but it's a good indicator. So I use no emotions, no gut feel. Um, there's no should I or shouldn't I get into this trade. I, there's either a signal or there isn't. Um, as I say, I accept that I'm going to lose more times than I win. That's just the way it's going to be. And I'm com I'm comfortable with that. Um, and because of that, and despite the fact that I'm losing more times than I win, I am keeping my losses small. I'm letting my winners run to their full potential. So sometimes these winners will amount to nothing. Sometimes they'll be tiny little winners. Nothing very exciting. You know, it could be 0.5 R win. But sometimes they run and they're huge. Okay, and I let them run. Until my system generates an exit signal. That's when I get out. So if a trade runs on and it's starting to make £1,000, £2,000, £3,000 profit, I'm not going to panic and decide to get out early. I will wait for my exit signal to decide that for me. And when my exit signal appears, that's when I choose to get out. So I don't let any emotion get involved. Uh, and only risk a small percentage of my account on each trade. So what am I looking for in my system? Uh, I want a market that's got good tight spreads. Uh, I want um, a liquid system, a liquid market. So uh, a market where lots of shares are being traded in volume between people. Uh, I want affordable minimum bet size. So especially with spread betting, uh, you don't want to be trading necessarily Amazon where you need a thousand point stop loss. Because then if you are, you know, it's going to move hundreds of points a day. It's going to not, I see a lot of people trade in Amazon and they get stopped out within five minutes of opening a position because it's too rich for their, their size of their capital. So, you know, I'm looking for markets that meet that. And I teach people in my course and through my coaching, how to identify the right markets for your account size. I want a system where I can make money in up and down markets, which spread button absolutely achieves. I want a systematic mechanical trading system where I'm trading signals. I want a simple system that I can understand easily. Um, I'm not interested in these complicated systems where you've got seven different indicators open on your charts. I use two moving averages and the price. And that's pretty much it. Uh, there's no complication really. I run a couple of filters that help me filter out some of the uh, results in my scans that I run. And I teach people how to do that. So you can filter out some of the opportunities which whittles down the options available to you so that uh, you haven't got hundreds of stocks to choose from. There's only a handful to choose from. But it's so simple, a child could do it. And I've taught so many, fa I've taught over a thousand people how to do this. Um, and some people can do it because they're strong uh, emotionally. They can, you know, keep their emotions out of trading. Some people are just too emotional that they, you know, they're still making those bad mistakes. But there's a big percentage of people that have understood how this works and they've gone out there and they're making more money than I am uh, because they are tra they're picking different stocks to me. And some of those stocks are performing way better than the ones I've picked. And, you know, they've gone out and made way more money than I have, which is, you know, more power to them. That's fantastic news. I'm more than happy um, that I could be involved in that forum. But I want a simple system that anyone can pick up and start trading. And because I believe, I mean, there's a big consensus around the world. I think we naturally assume that complicated equals better. And it's often not the case. In my experience, in all the different jobs I've done in coaching, coaching football, coaching fraud investigation, I always found that simpler approaches worked the best. It's the same for my trading. I think a simpler approach is the way to go. Um, and I want a system where I can make large enough profits that matter and can help towards my account growth. I don't, I'm not looking to just make a few percent here and there. I need decent returns to grow my account. Um, so I want a system that I can back test well over historical price data. And it needs to fit all that criteria above, basically. Uh, I use two simple moving averages. Very, very easy. Uh, this creates my entry and exit signals for me. I simply follow those signals and I stay disciplined throughout. I only risk 1% per trade. I use wide stop losses and smaller position sizes, smaller bet sizes. That's the way it works for me. Uh, I'm 95% mechanical, 5% discretionary. So basically what that 5% is, is a selection of stocks. So if you've got 100 stocks in front of you, then you're going to have to pick your favorites out of that. Um, and you're going to have to use your discretion for that. There's no mechanical approach to that. You could probably design one if you really, really wanted to be 100% mechanical, but I don't have that. So I think part of the fun of trading is, you know, I can we can both trade the same system, 
but you can choose one stock, I could choose a different one, and our results are going to be completely different. And, you know, I might make 20%, you might go and have an 80% year. So, you know, that's what I like about this whole approach as well. There's a bit of fun, there's a bit of unknown in there as well. Um, but you don't have to trade that way, you can find a mechanical way to select your stocks if you wish. Uh, you can only select stocks that start the letter A if you want. It really makes no difference to me. Um, I want 100% reaction. I'm not interested in making any predictions in my trading. So let's have a look at some results. Time to hit some results and, and, and then wrap things up. So we're going to look at end of day trading quickly. Okay, so this is a spreadsheet that I've put together. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. Um, so this is my spreadsheet of my trades um, over a, quite a large period of time. But um, what I wanted to show you here, these are all end of day trades. And the, the important things to focus on here, the big takeaways here, are look at the price of the, of the losses. Okay, look at the value of the losing trades. So minus 37 quid, minus 29, minus 44, minus 34, minus 27, minus 4 quid. Relatively small losses. I'm risking on this system no more than £50 pounds per trade. Okay, at the time of doing this system, I was risking fifty pounds per trade. This is quite some time back, but um, the 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 understanding, you know, still all applies. The philosophy still applies. But now look at the winning trades. We've got a two hundred and fifty-four pound one there, a twenty-six quid, a thirty-three quid down here, one hundred and thirty-three, two two eight, one eight seven. You're never going to have losing trades that big on this system because you're capped at a loss of fifty quid at the max. Now, some of these losses are only four quid. Some of them are only nine quid because that's the system gets us out of these trades well early. As soon as this trade starts to go against us in the wrong direction, it cuts us out of these trades. And so sometimes you don't lose anywhere near the 50 quid you've risked. But the upside is uncapped. The winners are uncapped. You can make huge winning trades. So we're risking 50 quid. But here, you know, on this Admiral trade that we made, this was a long trade. We risked 50 quid. We made 228. Well, that's four times, nearly five times our return. We would never have a loss that big. But look at these losing runs, first of all. You know, we've had four losing trades in a row, then a win. Then we've had six losing trades in a row, then a win. Then a huge run of losing trades there, you know. I mean, that's pretty painful, this run here. But then we go on a little bit of a run of winning trades. So these losing trades... They don't amount to that much because we keep our losses small. And we know we're going to lose more times than we win, so it's cool. But have a look at some of these wins. £1,668. This was my 31R trade. So I risked 53 quid. So had I, uh, had I closed this trade for a loss, the most I would have lost on this trade was 53 quid. That's how much I risked. But I managed to turn that round into a £1,000. £668 profit using this system, which is 31 times my maximum risk, a 3,100% return on the 53 quid I initially was going to risk on that trade. So they're the big wins you're looking for. Uh, we've got 1,091, that was a 15 hour trade, not long afterwards, went on a bit of a losing run, but then, you know, this losing run amounted to 200 quid in losses, and that was a six trade losing run, we lost 200 quid. But, you know, straight away we then make 1,091. So, and a couple more winners straight after that. And then another winner, 102. So, you can see here what I'm talking about. Uh, you've got this trade here, which is uh, a time of recording this. This has actually been closed now on this shot sheet. It's not been updated. Uh, but that trade actually closed for £1,500. And it was about 17, 16 or 17 R trade, that one. Uh, that's free eye group that we traded. Uh, the trade lasted a year, so it was quite a long trade, but uh, it made a stunning return. We risked 88 quid on it and turned it into £1,633. So big, big return on that. And you can see here, you know, we made 6,025 quid. Have a look down here in the corner. 79 total trades, 53 losing trades, only 26 winners. Okay, that's a 33% win rate. So like I said, between 28 and 42% we've been seeing. 33% win rate, but look at the profits. Huge. We actually made a uh, huge return on this list of trades that we made. So, And that's despite these big losing runs that we had. We still ended up massively profitable. So that's just an example of how it works on a, a daily approach. 
And now we're going to have a look at the results from an intraday approach, even though the slide there says end of day. This is intraday that we're going to be looking at now. So this is um, me trading in 2016, July 2016. These are all the trades I made using my intraday 10 minute system. So I was using 10 minute charts. Um, and these are every, every trade we made during that month. We made 30 total trades. 21 of these trades are losing trades. Only nine of them are winning trades. And if we look here, you can see the price of the losing trades. I'm actually on this system, I'm risking 330 odd quid per trade. Okay, so very different to the other system uh, in terms of size, but we're risking 330 odd quid on each trade, but we lost 60 quid, 67, 67, 68, 156 there, it's a bit bigger, uh, 74, 198. Um, but we're risking, we're willing to lose 330 quid on these trades. That's our maximum risk. So we're still not reaching that amount. But then have a look at some of these winners. 805, 1875, 463, 236, 689. These are big winning trades. And, you know, some people say to me, well, this is easy for you to say. Um, where's the evidence? Well, the evidence, you know, is the chart. Because when you know the rules of this system, you can go back over the historical charts and you can say, ah, was there a signal at 10 o'clock on the 26th of the 7th, 2016? And would I have bought at that price? And where would I have sold it? And would I have made that profit? And the answer is yes, because the historical charts don't change. They are set in stone. So once you know the system, you can apply it to the historical charts and you can see for yourself that had you traded the system, you would have made the same profits as I did in terms of return. You might have a different balance to me and therefore made different financial values on each trade, but the trades themselves would have been exactly the same and you would have made a profit. So 30 trades, 21 losses, nine winners. Let's have another uh, look at another month. So this is September 2016. Uh, we made 27 trades. Now we had 13 winners and 14 losses. So it's nearly a 50% win rate, essentially 48% win rate. Okay, it's so quite high. And you can see here, you know, we profit from that massively. The higher your win rate, obviously, the more money you're going to make. But we were risking about £400 per trade on this one because by then the account balance was a lot higher and we risk uh, based on percentage. Uh, we're risking 400 quid risk per trade. Uh, we, we lost our maximum risk on this trade here, the fourth one down, we lost, you know, 402, then we lost nearly 400 quid again. Uh, so we had a couple of maximum risk losing trades where our stops got hit. Uh, and we went on a six trade losing run as well, where we lost a fair decent amount of money. But we made 683 on the second trade, we made 1500 a bit further down, you know, we made another 600 a bit further down, we made 1161 further down. These are the big trends that we're looking for that pay off those losing trades and leave us with profit left over. And as you can see here, despite you know having one more losing trade than our winners, we made £4,204 profit. And then let's have a look at when it doesn't work. Okay, so this is January 2017. Now people uh, often get into this habit of just showing their successes. Well, this is a month where we didn't make profit. Okay, and this is important to understand because and important to see because you've got to set the right expectations. I believe that, you know, you can't be a good trend follower, trader or spread better if you don't know what's likely to be coming, if you've got the wrong expectations set. So you need to know that this can happen. And this is a month of January 2017. We had a massive losing run. Now, again, we're risking £250 risk per trade in this particular month. Uh, we don't hit that on any of these losing trades. You know, a loss of 45, a loss of 59, a loss of 58, a loss of 42. There's some big ones in there as well, a couple of 180s. But we control those losing trades. So even if we went on a losing run, we were still doing okay at the end of it because we, we managed those losses. Uh, look at the first trade. We started off with a £374 winner anyway, so that kind of helps a little bit. But we didn't really have any big winners. We didn't get any big trends until the end of the month. Okay, so 60 quid, 80 quid, 112, 125. Looking at these greens here, you know, 16 quid, 36, £3.84. Uh, not big winners. Okay, they're not paying off the losers that we need them to. And that was just because the market was flat during that month. There was just nothing going on. We There was no big trends, no big movements, and lots of little losing trades that were starting to add up. And it wasn't until the end of the month that things kicked off. 
and we made 900 quid, we made 550, we made 317. We ended up losing by one half decent trade of 137 quid. So we made 47 total trades, we lost 34, and we had 13 winners. Okay, so again, way more losing trades than winning trades, but by, despite that, we still only lost 137 pounds. Now couple that against the four thousand pound winning month, or you know the one thousand eight hundred pound winning month, or however much it was, uh, this is as bad as it gets, really. Uh, you know these big losing runs that we have to then soak up that are very painful whilst we're going through it. Uh, but then if we stick to our system, those big winners eventually come along. These big trends eventually come along when the market wakes up, and we're there to profit uh, on them, uh, you know, and they always come. These big trends always happen because uh, that's just the way the market is. Very Markets go through flat periods. That puts us through a bit of a losing run, but there's always these big trends that happen a bit later on. At some point, the market will always start to move again. And we're sitting there executing every single signal, waiting for that big trend to occur. Because when it does, we're riding it and we ride it the whole way. So we're going to make big, big profits out of that. So that's pretty much what I wanted to show you on the intraday side of things. And all I've done there is I've taken my in, my end of day approach. I've built a system that works using the same philosophy and applied it to 10 minute charts. And it works in exactly the same way. So it's this concept of when we lose, we lose small. When we win, we allow ourselves to win big so that we can pay off those losing trades, that cost of doing business and be left with profits left over afterwards. And here's a chart just showing you uh, one of the intraday trades that I made. Um, this was back in June 2016, I believe. Uh, we went short here where we had an in a signal to go short on this particular market. And we just take it. We don't know whether or not it's actually going to work out or not. We just take the signal. On this occasion, it worked really nicely and it fell uh, and it went all the way down and it just kept going down. And this lasted for a whole week. So we're holding this position on a 10 minute chart for a week. And then eventually the price starts to go back up again. We get a signal because our system tells us when to get out and when to get in. Uh, the system told us it's time to get out of this trade. So we closed it. We risked 233 quid on the trade and we profited 2,244. We had to do nothing over that week. We pressed the, clicked a button, went short, held it for that whole period, waited for the exit signal and then got out. And we got out at uh, a 960% return on the risk that we took. So some big, big profits there. And I'm just going to show you one of the trades that we made on the end of day approach as well. And so this is a chart of Ashtag Group. This is the 31R trade that we made. Uh, we got in down here and we got out up here and we rode this all the way up that trend and we made a big 31R return. A beautiful trade, uh, massive profits coming off the back of that, paid off a lot of the losers, gave us loads to play with afterwards in terms of profit. Um, and this is the kind of trend that we're looking for. And these happen all the time. Uh, I mean, if I can just scroll forward with this particular stock, Aztec Group, you can see here we have another big trend there. We've, we're currently sitting on one at the moment. Um, big trend on that one. So, you know, there's these big moves happen on the stock market all the time. And if you're following a very simple trading system that you can stick to and stay disciplined with, then you can capitalize on this. You can make the money on this. You don't need to know anything about the stock, anything about why it's going up in value. You don't need to know. If you get a signal, you trade it. And when it tells you to get out, you get out. And we bank. And we make sure that when we get in, the system is designed so that if it starts to go against us and it starts to become a losing trade, it kills it quick. And it's automated. But when it goes well, it's uncapped, so it can just keep going up forever if it wants to, and we'll just cash in eventually one day when it starts to fall back down again, which it inevitably will, as all stocks do. So that's pretty much it. I just wanted to, before we finish up, just want to show you my website, which is here, spreadbetbeginner.co.uk. Uh, here you can contact me if you're interested in contacting me. Uh, there is blog articles that I write and articles as access to podcast episodes that I do for spread betting. Uh, we're up to episode number 68 of the Spread But Beginner podcast. We've had 200,000 downloads of iTunes alone, which is awesome. But you can also listen to it 
here through the website. Um, you've got access to my courses. So if it is something that you want to do, you want to start um, training how to uh, to capitalize on the stuff you've seen, uh, you can sign up for my four-hour spread bet in beginner course. That is, as you see underneath here, daily charts. Only needs 30 minutes of your time a day to trade that. Um, and here you've got the swing trading course, which is the 10-minute to one-hour charts. And both of those are online courses that you can click on here and you can enroll straight away. You've got access to my podcast here. You've got access to my YouTube channel. Uh, if you want to watch any of my free videos that I've put up and I, I'm quite active on YouTube. And uh, you've also got access to my Facebook group. Uh, if you click on forum, it will take you straight here and you can join here. And uh, we've got 770 members in there. Uh, and there's plenty of activity in here. That's me and my ugly mug working on my new trading room I told you about that I'm, tra I'm currently building. Uh, we've got people p posting their own trading results and stuff like that in here. Some jokes and, you know, just a generally uh, informative group. People asking about certain charts, certain stocks. So if you're on Facebook, come and join us. Just type in Trading the Trend and you'll find us. But yeah, if you're interested in the courses, you can find them there. If you want anything else, any other access to me, that's here. I've got a free book you can download. I've got other goodies on here as well. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for watching. If you want to get in touch, you can email me at chris at spreadbetbeginner.co.uk uh, or you can contact me through any of these different me uh, uh, mediums. Uh, you can contact me through the Facebook group. I'm on Facebook as well, which you'll find me on there as a, as a normal user. Um, yeah, thank you very much for listening, for watching. I hope this has given you some sort of value. Uh, I hope it's taught you something about trading. Uh, that's all I'm aiming to try and do is to try and share what I've learned, share what I'm doing. Um, yeah. And if it's added value, please let me know. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys very soon. Cheers.